Our visceral fat surrounds our organs. Our intestinal tract is an organ. They work very close together. What is inside our gut directly impacts our visceral fat and probably vice versa. We need to be paying close attention to it. As a matter of fact, the visceral fat is literally there to protect us from pathogens and lipopolysaccharides, bad things coming out of our gut. The situation is that we have way too much visceral fat. So like maybe we're just accumulating visceral fat as sort of a protective mechanism and that's why we have such a problem with it. Visceral fat is not good, okay? It leaks inflammatory cytokines. It has issues as far as just inflammatory responses within the body. Too much of it is not good. A little bit is fine. In fact, a little bit of it is good. But now there's some interesting science behind the microbiome in visceral fat and why some people with less microbiome diversity end up developing more visceral fat. Let's take a look at the research. First, we have to look at a study that was published in the journal Clinical Nutrition. Now, this is wild because it looks at ultra-processed foods, and I've talked about this study before. Okay, ultra-processed foods are really just processed foods in general. They're things that have a lot of the nutrient value sucked out of them. They don't have fiber. They're just taste, right? They're most of the things that you're going to find down the cracker aisle, down the sweets aisle, down the processed food aisle, the canned aisle. It's like 80% of that stuff. Okay. The ultra processed food, when they look at this study, they were looking at Spaniards who don't consume a whole lot of ultra processed foods compared to like where I live in the United States. Okay. Now what they looked at was different tertiles. They found there was a low tertile that consumed like 2% processed foods, a medium tertile, which is closer to 6%, and the highest tertile consumed about 15 and a half percent of their overall calories from ultra processed foods. They found that the ultra processed food group ended up having a huge increase in visceral fat compared to the other groups. What's scary is that where I live in the United States, 60% of the average diet is made up of ultra processed foods compared to 15%. So I would hate to see what our visceral fat numbers look like. It's probably pretty sketchy, but where does that come in with the microbiome? Like, what am I getting at? Well, check this out. The Journal of Nutrition had published a study that correlated ultra processed foods to significant gut dysbiosis. What gut dysbiosis means is that you have a skewed ratio of bacteria within your gut, meaning you have a plethora of bacteria that are maybe not so beneficial and less the bacteria that are largely associated with being beneficial, but also just low diversity in general. And they found that, okay, it's probably the things like the emulsifiers that are just breaking down some of the gut biome, also the additives, the preservatives, the colors, all have an effect on the microbiome and they accumulate. Like when we actually start eating these things consistently, yes, it's going to have an effect, but it doesn't really stop there. Let's break it down more. The International Journal of Obesity did a meta-analysis, took a look at 889 individuals, and they found that upon giving them a DEXA scan where they could see their visceral fat content and then looking at their microbiome, they found, well, what do you know? Those that had a less diverse microbiome had significantly more, guess what, visceral fat. This visceral fat, pot belly associated with everything that you can think of as far as like an inflammatory response. It's not good. A lot of disease states link back to this. I'm not saying it's the end all be all, but it's something we need to pay attention to. But then when we start looking at the individual species is where it gets interesting because obviously diversity is important. More diversity probably can be equated to a little bit less visceral fat, but individual species is where the science really is going now because now we can start understanding, okay, well, what species are good? What species are bad? Okay, there's a specific form of eubacterium that they found was elevated in those that had higher levels of visceral fat. So then the British Journal of Nutrition published a study that broke it down a little bit more because they saw that this same strain, that same strain of eubacterium was associated with low fiber intake. Well, low fiber intake equals lower diversity because fiber is what allows our microbiome to feed like our microbiome feeds on the fiber. So when we consume fiber, it breaks down slow in our gut, doesn't really digest, but it does get fermented and eaten by our bacteria. So less overall fiber equals less bacteria equals, hmm, it just turns out more of this eubacterium, so this dysbiosis. So we're always in this constant battle to try to find the strains that are good and the strains that are potentially bad, although we don't really know the full answer. So we always say that diversity is best. People ask me, by the way, the probiotic that I recommend, I usually use seed. In fact, I, as of six, seven months ago, I always use seed. So I put a link down below. They are really at the forefront of a lot of the microbiome research right now, which is why I'm a big fan. If you watch my channel, I'm very evidence-based. So I like to look at what is published. And when I see that seed is doing a lot of research and publishing things themselves, 
it just puts them on my radar. Plus I notice a big impact with how I feel when I take it. So there's a link down below for Seed Probiotic if you wanna give them a shot. So that link is down below. And if you use the code that's below, you will also save 15%. That way it just saves you a little bit as well. So use that link down below in the description after you are finished watching this video. Again, it's called Seed and it has a really cool technology with a capsule inside of a capsule so it can survive a little bit more and bacteria gets to where it's potentially supposed to go, right? So use that link down below. Now, moving on, the bacteria that is associated with being good, okay, more of this bacteria seems to be correlated with less visceral fat. This one is bifidobacterium, which we see in some things. We see it in yogurt and stuff like that. But again, there's multiple different strains of it. So what's interesting is there's a study that was published in the Biosciences of Microbiota. It took a look at 137 Japanese adults and it gave them a specific supplement. This was interesting because they actually gave them a supplement of an individual strain. They found that when they gave them bifidobacterium, they didn't have any change in their subcutaneous fat. Didn't change anything there with their regular fat that's on the outside of the body, but they had a significant change in their visceral fat just by adding that in. So that's really intriguing. That specific strain seems to have an effect. And that's just the tip of the iceberg because we've got, what, millions of like different kind of bacteria that are in our gut that we even know of, let alone what's potentially like lurking around that we don't know of. Now, the reason that this is probably so associated with the visceral fat is, again, the visceral fat is packed with macrophages. Its job is to diffuse an acute infection that might occur. Let's say, for instance, this is purely hypothetical, but let's say that you... Uh, have an instance where a bunch of pathogenic bad bacteria from your gut are leaking into your bloodstream. You have visceral fat that surrounds your organs. The macrophages and the immune cells that are active in your visceral fat, they are there to neutralize that threat immediately. Because when you have stuff that leaks from that hermetically sealed environment of your gut into your open cavity and into your bloodstream, bad news. If you've ever heard of going septic, like that's what that is. And it's very, very bad. Septic, C. diff, all that stuff, not good, right? So visceral fat is there to protect us from that. It's super active. Think of it as a component of your immune system, okay? But if we have so much of it, it's constantly pumping that stuff out, okay? So it is so closely correlated with what is going on in our gut because its job is to determine, oh, if there's bad bacteria and it's potentially leaking, I need to arm up. Okay, but the problem is, is we don't need to be armed up all the time. Otherwise, it's having this heightened immune response that's happening all the time. And that's probably what is really damaging a lot of people. It's not the fact that it's unsightly and it gives you a pot belly and it surrounds your organs and it causes issues there. That's almost secondary. Nobody wants a pot belly, but we really don't want it pumping out all these issues all the time. So I'm not saying that I know the answer to anything, but I would say that eating a diverse amount of foods, no matter what you're doing, keto, fasting, paleo, vegan, it doesn't matter. Getting more diverse with the foods you experiment with is only going to allow you to spread out and diversify your chances of being able to have just the right gut bacteria there since we don't know the solid answer of which ones specifically are great. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I will see you tomorrow.